Good afternoon. We welcome everyone, uh, whether you are here in person or at home. We pray the Lord's richest blessings upon you. Good to be with you and good to be able to worship with you. Our service for this weekend is for the 16th Sunday after Pentecost, but also, of course, on our hearts. It's the 20th anniversary of September 11th. And we, in our prayers, will remember that as well. And we give thanks for the Lord's blessing and his peace. Our text, or I should say our theme, is I believe, I think I believe. But before we begin our service, would you do me a favor? Would you just stand up and turn around and say hello to those around you in God's peace? Hello in God's peace. Hello in God's peace to each of you. God's peace. God's peace to each of you. God's peace. Our opening hymn, we sing. Our opening hymn is, is Oh for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. We sing verses 1 through 5. May God bless our worship. As you're able, we rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We take a moment of silence for reflection on God's word and self-examination. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Be strong, and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from my persecutors. Make your face shine on your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
Be strong and let, let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. pray we pray together in unison our prayer Lord Jesus Christ our support and defense in every need continue to preserve your church in safety govern her by your goodness and bless her with your peace for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever amen please be seated for our scripture readings Our Old Testament lesson, our first lesson, is from Isaiah chapter 50, beginning with the fourth verse. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Behold, all of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? Let him who walks in darkness and has no light trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read together in unison the gradual for the 16th Sunday after Pentecost. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Our epistle reading is from James chapter 3, beginning with the first verse. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with a stricter, greater strictness. For we all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. If we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. 
With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. As you're able, we rise at this time for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. It also serves as our text for tonight's message. When they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them and scribes arguing with them. And immediately all the crowd, when they saw him, were greatly amazed and ran up to Jesus and greeted him. And he asked them, what are you arguing about with them? And someone from the crowd answered him, teacher, I brought my son to you for he has a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast it out, and they were not able. And he answered them, O faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. And when the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy. And he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And it has often cast him into fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible for one who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out, and the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, This kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We sing our creedal hymn 953.
please be seated. We continue with the children's lesson. Josiah, our DCE, will be leading us with it today. Thanks again, Josiah. Good evening. It is so good to see you guys here today. Uh, are either of you, do you like math? A little bit. Do you know what math is? Like adding, subtracting, multiplying. I've got some symbols here. Do you know what we call these symbols in math by any chance? Either one of them? Yes. What's this one? Yep. And what's this one? That's right, we got a subtract and a plus, exactly. And those are opposites. They do opposite things. You take away with subtract and you add with the plus. Now, I'm gonna show you one of these. What is this one? Do you know? That's multiplication, very good. And do you know the opposite of multiplication? Ooh, it is, do you know that one? Divide. The opposite of multiplication is divide. And so in math, we have these opposite symbols. And I want to talk a little bit more about opposites today. So, um, do you know what it means to be blind? What does it mean to be blind? Yeah, it means you can't see. So what is the opposite of being blind then? You can see. Okay, uh, how about this? What does it mean to be mute? Do you know that one? If you push the mute button on your TV, what happens to the sound? Do you know? You can't hear it anymore. So if you're mute, it means you can't talk. Mm -hmm. Well, the opposite of mute then would be, do you know? To be able to talk, right? And we could go on and on and list these opposites. But in the, uh, a reading from the book of Isaiah, who was a prophet, he tells us that God is going to take all these bad things and he's going to make them the opposite. He's going to make them good. Uh, and so he says this in Isaiah 35. He says, then the eyes of the blind will be opened. And he says that the ears of the deaf, or a person who can't hear, they will be opened as well, and they'll be able to hear again. And he tells us that the legs of a person who can't walk, they'll be fixed, and they'll be able to leap and jump like a deer, it says here. And he goes on and on, and he tells us about how God is going to undo all of these bad things. And then he tells us that, uh, he talks a little bit about death. And what is the opposite of death? Yeah? It's being alive. That's right. And he tells us that we don't have to be scared because our God will save us. And uh, we don't even have to be scared of death because God, Jesus, has saved us even from death. He'll say that, uh, that we have life eternal with him, and he has promised that. And that is something we can always rely on is God's promise. So why don't we say a quick prayer thanking him for that promise. Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you so much for um, undoing all, all of the bad things through the work that Jesus did on the cross. Uh, we thank you that we can have hope in life eternal through faith in Jesus. And uh, Lord, we can't wait to be with you forever. And all this we pray in your son's holy name. Amen. Thank you. We continue with our sermon hymn, which is Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness, 849.
us one. God's grace and his peace be multiplied unto each of you today from God our Father and from our risen Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today's message is the reading from our gospel from Mark chapter 9, Jesus casting out the demon of the boy. Please join with me in a word of prayer. We pray. Gracious Lord, be with us as we come to your house to hear your word and receive your strength, your comfort, to fuel our faith and hope in you and trust in you in all times and circumstances. We thank you most of all, Jesus, for your cross and empty tomb in which we have life and salvation. Be with us as we hear your word today, and I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart may it ever be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus, our risen Lord's name, we pray. Amen. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, I believe, at least I think I believe, I believe. What is it? Have you ever had those times of doubt and wondering your faith, whether you really believe or not? Have you been caught in that tension? Tell you what, it's been very difficult this past weekend to relive and see all that happened to our nation in 9-11, hasn't it? Overwhelming. On top of everything else we see going on in life and in our personal lives, it can become overwhelming. And we can doubt, you and I can, to the point where we wonder whether we really believe at all. Faith. Faith is a gift of God. Faith comes Two ways, the Bible tells it, either through hearing the message of the gospel of Jesus or through the waters of holy baptism, God creates faith. But he not only creates faith, he sustains the faith. It's God working, the Holy Spirit working in us and through us. Faith is also, it's never static. It never remains the same. It either grows stronger or weaker. It never stands still. Before the contramands, after class, I should say, on Friday, before they went home, I said to them, or at least before I said goodbye to them after class, I said, make sure you feed your faith this weekend. You see, faith is kind of like, well, our bodies need nourishment, water, so that it can live and thrive. Our vehicles, our machines that we use, whether our cars or farm machinery, need fuel to make them go. Our faith needs to be fed through hearing the word of God and through his sacraments. Apart from him, our faith declines and actually could die without God's intervention. So I guess the question for you and for me today is, where is our faith right now? If you had a scale, you feel really, really strong in the faith, or you're really hurting and you're doubting, where is it? Is it faltering or is it thriving? Are you on the brink of unbelief? You know, more than not, probably we need to, if we don't, pray the prayer of the man in our text for today. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. He said, believing and not believing, back and forth, this tension is resolved, not in ourselves, not in our strength, nor the strength of what we think our faith is, but it's found in Jesus and in him alone. For whoever sustains our faith or whoever rests in Jesus finds that they have hope and life and growth and peace even in difficult times especially in difficult times 
In our text for today, we encounter a father. And he, like all fathers, at least as we should, we love our children. We love them. And really, we do pretty much anything for them. As one person said, if we could, we'd give them the moon and the stars. His father loved his son, but the young boy was severely afflicted. Otherwise, he probably would have been healthy and strong, we presume. He was harassed, frustrated, from roaming up normally, very likely having no friends or even fun of playing with friends, with other kids. Because he was tormented, he was overtaken and dominated in his entire person by an evil spirit, a demon. And yes, it did happen. And yes, it can even happen today in our time. And this demon, as Josiah, you were saying, robbed him of speech. Or at least you talked about being mute, and that's exactly what this demon did. But the condition only worsened. The boy's father was desperate. We would be too. Who can help? What are we going to do? How can we, how can we help this son? Neighbors and friends probably witnessed it, saw it, and saw the family's pain and anguish, but probably kept distant because they were helpless too. Meanwhile, at times, the demon would convulse the, the boy's body terribly, throw him to the ground, and try to kill him, or hurl him into the lake and try to drown him. What a nightmare. Could you imagine? I can't. We have three boys. In our country, we've been blessed, haven't we? We've been blessed with medicine. Isn't it amazing that we have children's hospitals? I've been to the one in Madison at the UW. I've been to Chicago. Haven't been to, uh, haven't been to the one in Milwaukee, the children's hospital. I've been to the Mayo Clinic, Marshfield. We have some amazing hospitals and technology and medicine in our area. This wasn't available for this family. But really, it wouldn't have helped. Because this wasn't a matter for technology and medicine. It was far greater, sadly, a scourge. But the father had widely heard about Jesus and how he healed people of their diseases and cast out demons. And so maybe Jesus would have. However, at the time, Jesus was on the mountain, the transfiguration, where, remember, his glory was shown to be not just a man, but this was actually God in the flesh whom they and we were to listen to. But some of his disciples were still in the village. The man brought the son to them, but they couldn't drive the demon out. Frustrated and disappointed, the father must have been losing hope, maybe losing faith. He and his wife could not comprehend what's happening to their son. How could you? All was out of their control. Doctors, specialists, anyone. No help. Their son appeared never to be normal, would never be normal again. Nowhere to turn. How can they continue to believe in God in this circumstance? By the time Jesus and the three of the disciples returned to the village, the man must have been spent. He could only cry out, I believe. Help my unbelief. You know, unbelief takes many forms, doesn't it? Explanations abound, but few, if any, are there excuses for lack of faith of unbelief. Unbelief is really of ourselves. God is clear in his judgment. In Psalm 10, the psalmist deplores the wicked 
that pursue their ways and in their thoughts have no room for God. You know, there's been many celebrities, teachers, people who have scoffed God, claimed to be atheists, denied him. But unbelief is no respecter of persons. It plays no favorites, not only for them, it hits all sorts of people. Think of Judas, he was one of the disciples, right? Who followed the Lord. He said and pledged he would follow him. Unbelief, doubt must have hit him because otherwise how could he chose so cheaply betray our Lord Jesus Christ for 30 pieces of silver? You know, there's a story about a Lutheran pastor who for over 30 years served the Lord. To all appearances, he had been faithful to his calling. And he did all that was expected to be done as a pastor. He preached the word. He had good sermons. He taught the Bible study faithfully. He taught and brought comfort to the sick and dying. He led his congregation in mission in ministry. Yet on his deathbed, he confided with a friend who was also a pastor. And he said, I never believed. I never believed any of it. Wow. Thanks be to God, it's not the pastor. The Holy Spirit can work through the word proclaimed by whoever. But unbelief can also can take on apathy. Once term for atheism, you'd think of an atheist, a person who says devoutly that I don't believe and rejects God. But today there's a different kind of unbelief that's out there. Less clear, a little bit of confusion and doubt that comes with it. What really is the condition, the condition is that of indifference. People can claim to one another to be Christians, to be followers of God, but their lifestyles are far from it. Far from the Lord. For such persons, it can be very true. God remains something irrelevant, non-existent. This too is a form of unbelief. But unbelief can also come from circumstance, taunting temptations also for people who do have sincere faith and belief. Some of us, maybe you're one going through it right now, may be going through extremely difficult crosses and difficulties, trials. And you desire sincerely to believe, but you struggle to believe for the reason that we've grown weary. We're exhausted, we're tired. The illness, the condition, the circumstance, the situation only seems to be getting worse. And frankly, like that man, we're spent. We're out of sorts, out of patience. And maybe we're distraught and disgusted. Is there help for such believers or for us in that time who understandably are gripped by unbelief? with a feeling of our helplessness. Well, thanks be to God, there is. But it's not in ourselves. It's not in our world. It's not in our emotions or feelings. It's only found in Jesus, our crucified and risen Lord. Only does he believe, bring us belief and an eternal hope and help in life. So when our Lord returns to the village and approaches the village, his disciples are debated, debating in a heated discussion with certain scribes, skeptics, critics, and doubters of Jesus and of the faith. In fact, these disciples were under attack because they could not deliver this young boy from the demon. 
Our Lord had empowered them to cast out demons. But they couldn't get it done here. Now Jesus arrives. Excitement fills the air again. Everyone expectantly looks to him. He says, what's the fuss all about? And from the crowd, the father, the boy, calls out, I asked your disciples to cast the demon out, and they were unable to do so. O faithless generation, he proclaims, probably rebuking his disciples and us at times, who slip into thinking at times that it's our own power. And such false thinking will lead to failure. But then Jesus looks for the boy. Bring him to me. Now thanks be to God, on many counts, the scene here is the greatest help. This is our hope. Even today, on the 20th anniversary of 9-11. To us and to all. Where our Lord comes upon a situation, he takes command. In whatever dire situation or circumstances, desperate or frustrating, we are never out of reach of our Lord, never beyond his presence and help and care, thanks be to God. And where he is, he takes command. So-called skeptics and doubters and the atheists criticize our Lord and his word and the faith. They would scoff over this scene which Jesus comes upon when he returned from the Mount of Transfiguration. They would say, see the mess, Jesus, your disciples have made, but not so fast. Look and hear what Jesus does. No one in the village would join in and scoff with you. Wait and see. And they will behold the power of God and the deliverance of our Lord. Jesus calls for the boy, bring him to me. The disciples had been successful previously. On earlier occasions, they had cast out demons by the power of the Lord. But here, no, they could not get it done. It seems that they, they themselves had slipped out of faith into unbelief themselves. That is, the disciples took for granted the power given by the Lord, as if they possessed such power of their own right. They became faithless, going on their own, and they accomplished nothing. The demon would not budge, and the young boy continued to suffer. Only Jesus in this scene is believable, where we find hope and life and peace. Only Jesus gets it done. Skeptics and doubters and atheists do not like the narrative of our text in Mark chapter 9. What happened is not disputable. The crowd gathered. They all saw the work of the Lord. The people pressed to see the outcome. Here a desperate father pleading for help. I believe help my unbelief. Jesus' disciples had failed. What will Jesus himself do? Well, Jesus takes command and he directs with a stern voice the words to the demon with his word. You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And he does. What happened then caused the crowd to be amazed and it should us too. The demon thrashed the boy violently so that the lad lay on the ground. Some shouted, he's dead. But Jesus reaches and takes him by the hand and he lifts up and he is alive and he rises up. The father, I can imagine, lunges and reaches for the boy and began carrying him home. Quietly, the crowd leaves in amazement. And Jesus enters the house and the disciples ask, why they weren't able to do it. And he says, this kind of demon cannot be driven out by anything but prayer 
meaning complete dependence on God and his power. Not by our puny powers, but by trust in and dependence on the Lord who is believable, who gets it done for his people, including you and me, including the greatest and highest work of all, our salvation, our redemption, the forgiveness of our sins and eternal life by his cross and empty tomb, completed in the power of his life-giving resurrection from the dead. His victory is ours. Sadly, skeptics and doubters miss out because they are so busy challenging the Lord with their petty criticism and scoffing. They miss the victory of faith in our Lord. Yes, we may go from moments of faith to moments of doubt and unbelief, caught in that miserable tension at times including perhaps today. But help is at hand. He is here. He's here in his word and his sacraments. He's with us always, even to the end of the age, even through the valley of the shadow of death. And he acts for us powerfully as he is gracious and merciful always. Yes, even your pastor prays. Oh Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. And who is not helped today? We all are through our risen Lord. You see from the Details of the gospel, by the power of the Holy Spirit, there is new faith for all, even you and me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the true faith until life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. As you're able this time, we rise for our prayers to our good and gracious God. Lord God, we believe. Help our unbelief. Sustain us through the many troubles and trials of this world. When unclean spirits afflict us and those that we love, revive our trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O triune God, our refuge and strength, we turn to you for peace and comfort as we recall 9-11, 20 years ago. We thank you for the bravery and the sacrifice of those who gave their lives to save others. May our suffering from these attacks awaken in us awareness of the pain and fear that so many around the world live with each day. May we remind us, may it remind us that you are our only true security, our hope. Give us your strength to face the memory of this attack and the changes it made in our lives. Give us also compassion to help and encourage each other and recognize need around the world. Give us your hope as we live each day for you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, guide and bless the choices of, of our world leaders. Give them wisdom and discernment. May their actions bring your peace to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, bless the teachers of our schools, colleges, and seminaries, as well as all who teach and serve. Help them to be faithful in their vocations and faithful to you in your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord and Father, tame our tongues so that they are not a restless evil full of poison. Turn them by your spirit from cursing the people you've made in your likeness to instead blessing you and others and keep us from stumbling in what we say. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Lord God, we have promised that you have promised that all things are possible for one who believes. In such faith, we bring before you those in need of your healing hand, blessing, strength, and care. Especially remember Laura Hillman, Candy Baumgart, Ken and Sandy Rosensky, Dennis Rysick, Charlotte Wilson, Seal Zimmerman, Karen Cook, Dennis McCauley, Larry Novak, Dave Dietz, Carolyn McCauley, and all others in need, asking them that you would grant them strength, health, and healing according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, comfort of all who mourn loved ones, the death of loved ones, especially those who have recently been called to your heavenly home through faith in Jesus. We remember the family of Louise Lang, the family of Reverend Henry Bailey, the father of Emily Rogers, the family of Lorraine Giebel, the family of Jared Ward, the family of Colin, Connie Greaves, and all who mourn. Grant your presence, comfort, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great God, we thank you for your many blessings, especially for life and salvation in Jesus. We further, further praise you in celebration of the gift of a baby boy, Knox Daniel, to Ashley Grosskreutz in Trent McCool. Continue to bless and keep mother and child in your grace and care. We further thank you in celebration of the 62nd wedding anniversary of Lyle and Ella Mae Lemoyne. May we ever give you our thanks and all glory and praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son, who suffered unjustly for our sins and rose victorious from death to bring us life and light, bless us as he comes near to us in his body and blood in his holy supper. May we be strengthened in times of doubt and nourished in body and soul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, Grant us, Father, for the sake of Jesus who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. We sing our offertory, verse 1 and 3 of hymn 846. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night in which he's betrayed, he took bread, and when he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, he took the cup after supper, and when he given thanks, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples and said, 
Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament, my blood, which was shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Now may this true body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, may it strengthen and preserve each of you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in his peace with great joy. Amen. As you're able, we rise at this time as we pray our post-communion call. We pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our closing hymn, Oh, that the Lord would guide my ways. Once again, good afternoon. Josiah, you have a couple announcements? Yes, I do. Uh, not next weekend, but the weekend after is the beginning of our Sunday school classes. Um, so if you have any students that you'd like to register for that, uh, stop by the office and grab the forms or check them out online. They're on our website. Um, also, our senior high youth group will meet for the first time this upcoming Wednesday, and that is at 6.30 in the gymnasium is where we'll meet, and that will go until 8.30. And that is all I've got. Thank you very much, Josiah. Um, also, as you heard in the prayers, Louise Lang was called to her heavenly home through faith in Jesus. The funeral will be Tuesday at the Hoof Funeral Home. One to two is, uh, is a committal. You'll also ask that the family asks only people who are vaccinated uh, and wearing masks would come. And we pray comfort in the Lord, in our risen Lord, in the living hope that is ours in Him. Also notice that tomorrow is special voters meeting. Um, after the uh, after the 10 o'clock, uh, 9 o'clock service at about 10, 15, uh, where uh, they'll be requesting additional funds uh, that are needed for our tower project. Along with that, next week is back to church weekend. And so a wonderful opportunity for us to invite and bring along with us uh, those who maybe in our family, friends, those in the church, just to come back and that we worship the Lord and we get our faith fed, strengthened through faith in our risen Lord. Uh, you'll also see some uh, upcoming events, a grief share, along with a, uh, a young adults gathering. And uh, check out the wonderful things that are happening. We just pray the Lord's richest blessings. Have a wonderful evening for him.